puff up. Warn Uptown that the log dam is broken. The logs are heading their way. It's an emergency. Will do. But what can they do about it? OJ's at Uptown. Tell him. Right. On the way, ten cents. A race against time. I'll beat him. Look, don't stop for anything. <laughs> Recently, I think it's safe to say I've been back in a Trackmaster or PlayRail mood, and for that reason, I recently found myself back at my storage unit to get my track and whatever I could of my trains back out. Inevitably, I would run into some old friends, and one of those old friends was somebody you may recognize. It feels like a lifetime ago, but a while back I made a video on a Oigawa Railway Thomas that I had weathered. And sadly, when I found him, uh, weathered would be an understatement. Sadly, at this point, he was pretty well banged up, didn't run too well, and was missing a face, but I did have an idea. I've recently been re-watching Tugs, and in the back of my mind, I've always kind of wondered, what if PlayRail made a Tugs run? Of course, sadly, this never did happen, or maybe it did, and I'm from an alternate universe where it did, and stole this model from there. You can choose. And seeing as I now had an open C12 to do anything with, I figured I would give it a shot. This time making Puffa, my favorite engine of the dock railway. And you might be thinking, a C12? That's kind of random. And trust me, I know, it's definitely not the most accurate, but upon looking at it and putting it up against Puffa, most of the proportions were there, or at least enough for me. I also imagine if PlayRail ever did this themselves, they'd probably just reuse some old tooling they already had. So I figured I would do the same, since I didn't want to buy a whole new engine for this. If you couldn't tell, I like making new things out of old stuff, and this was the perfect opportunity. So pretty quickly, I had the entire thing taken apart and sanded down a bit. From residing in a huge box with nothing but track, he had sadly taken quite a few dents, so that helped smooth those out, and also get rid of any lining and numbers he had before. To get a more accurate puff of shape, I also decided I would remove his splashers, which thankfully was super simple. The smoke box itself comes off, and those are just little pieces that hang off of the side. So using an X-Acto and some pliers, I quickly had those off as well. Then using sandpaper to sand that area smooth. Thankfully, it turned out his chassis was just fine, just very dirty and needed quite a bit of maintenance. So I took the entire thing apart, redid the motor, separated each part of the chassis and sprayed it all a matte black, and then reassembled it for testing, and thankfully it worked just fine after that. I now decided to turn back to the body, and there was one big modification this thing needed, or maybe didn't really need, but I wanted to do it, and that was getting rid of the molded wheel on the piston. I don't know why, these things just bother me, so if I ever get them on PlayRail engines, I'm probably gonna cut them off, and it was no different here. Using an X-Acto and some pliers, I managed to cut those off as well, then using a file to sand the areas smooth. And of course, if this is going to be Puffa, it's going to need a new funnel, so that was quickly removed and sanded down as well. I did leave a bit of remnant of the old funnel just to help me with placement of the new one. And for the new one, I would buy a diecast one from eBay. This would take a few days to arrive sadly though. So until then, I got to work on the body. To fit a cow catcher, I imagined the entire front end would need to be pretty much smooth like the rest of them. So soon after, I decided to remove that coupling and sand that smooth as well. Soon after this came priming, and it was also here I decided to be a little different with the paintwork. In most cases, Puffa is black, he is not a silver engine. That said, I imagine if PlayRail made him, they would probably do something to make it a bit special. This was kind of my way, it also separates him from everyone else in my collection pretty drastically. I also just think it looks good, I like it, Picasso, okay moving on. If this was gonna be Puffa, he was gonna need a megaphone, how else is he gonna yell at the trucks? And for this I would utilize a old 00 scale funnel. This was cut in half, sanded down, and painted a glossy red, then being applied to the front of his cab. I also decided to detail his cab a bit more now, painting in the side of his windows with a matte black. This being the same matte black I use for everything made by Apple Barrel. 
Puffa would also need a new smoke box door, and for this I also used a 00 scale one. I sadly don't remember what engine it came from, so you'll have to forgive me there. But the lamp itself is one of the ones made by Westcliff Works, and that was attached to the front and then glued on the front of Puffa. It's admittedly a little small, Puffa's actual one goes above his smoke box door, but this is... I don't know, it's casual enough for me. At the very least, it's unique. And pretty soon after that, I reattached the chassis to the body. He surprisingly was reaching completion pretty quickly, but sadly I still had to wait for that funnel and a new plow. Just for fun, I decided to 3D print some test parts. This being a mock funnel and what was supposed to be a mock snow plow as well. And while sadly I wasn't a fan of the funnel I printed, I really liked the cow catcher. It did need some smoothing, but after that and a quick repaint, it seemed to fit the front of Puffa pretty well. There sadly are a few dents, but I like to think that's, if anything, realism. And it fit the front a lot better than I initially thought it would, so that actually made it to the final model. The funnel, however, had to be waited for, but that quickly came in as well. Both parts were painted separately and then applied to the model. To fit the funnel, I ended up drilling a small hole in his smoke box, and that just slipped right inside. At this point, all I had to do was detail those lamps, use my apple barrel again to detail his funnel inside, or really anywhere I thought needed some, put them all back together and sealed it with matte clear. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to Puffa Now, my first non-Thomas Playrail custom. He sadly may not be the most accurate, but it's enough for me. And now, thankfully, Salty has a reliable friend in the dockyard. And with all of that being said, I guess the only thing left to do is see him in action. Yeah. 